right, we're winding this bad boy down. Trying to figure out the best way to send our people out to get supplies and come back. Right, the zombie survival trials. It's a three by three by two factorial ANOVA. There's the raw data. There's the table that we made with the mean of each group, the sum of each group, the sum of squared of each group. Now we're going to go ahead and fill out the values for the bracket terms in the three-way ANOVA. And from the previous video, we calculated all the bracket terms. That's where all the heavy lifting was. So now we're going to go ahead and use these values and plug them into this table. So A minus T, right, it's A minus T, B minus T, C minus T. That's the sum of squares for each of the main effects for the IVs. So I'm just going to go ahead and substitute the numbers after doing my subtractions. And then A minus 1 is the number of groups minus 1. So there are three levels. I'm sorry, three levels to group A, right? That was the weapons. So 3 minus 1 is 2. And then to find the mean squares, I simply divide the sum of squares by the degrees of freedom. And we get that. For further detail, it might be a good idea to go back and watch the two-variable ANOVA. I go over slowly and specifically each one of these different calculations but here I'm just gonna go kinda of fast so B minus T is that degrees of freedom was 2 209.05 divided by 2 should be that roughly I'm rounding so we're just gonna go ahead and calculate all the mean squares first and then we're gonna find the F's here towards the end of this video but we have to find the mean squares from each source of variance first. So now we're going to go down to our interaction, right? We got all the main effects here, A, B, and C. Now we're going to go into the interaction terms. And again, here's all the bracket terms. I'm simply going to do the calculations and put the values into the video, right? Interaction of A and B is that. Coming up next, the interaction of A and C is that. B and C, not very big at all. And then the big chimichanga, A, B, and C, not very impressive. Okay. And this, let's find out what the error term is. Let's do the last two here. So this, this one is the error term. We simply need to find the mean squares. That's going to be our main error term. So this 1.75, we're going to divide each one of these mean squares by 1.75. And that's going to give us our F ratio or our F test score or our F score or whatever you want to call it. And in the total, we really don't need to do that, but I do it anyway. All right, so for the F score of the A variable by itself, the main effect... We're going to take the mean square, 159.27, divided by the error term, 1.75, and that gives us our F score. Huge. Okay. Normally, with a case like this, an F, anything over a like a 2.5 or something, is going to be considered significant difference. I have a textbook. I'm going to look it up here, but I'm not going to show you how to do that. Again, you might want to look at the two-way ANOVA. I show you how to look it up in the textbook. So for B, it's going to be 104.52 divided by 1.75, and that comes out to be that. So I'm just going to divide all of these MSs by 1.75. Okay, so here's our, all our F's test statistics, our F ratios for each source of variance. So let's go ahead and interpret all this stuff. And I'm going to look this stuff up in the book. The first p-value for the A is less than 0 .001, but I'm just going to use the cutoff of 0 .05. That is the critical alpha for most of these. So I'm just going to state if it's less than 0 .05 or greater than 0 .05. Again, large test statistics make small p-values. So that's big, that's big. Right, B is less than that. C is that's pretty big. 0.05. Now we got to be careful. Even though we have a p-value of 0 0.00001, 
it does mean that it's more significant than like a 0.045 or something, but it's not going to change the effect size at all. But this one, the, the interaction between A and B is not significant. So that in other words, there was no interaction going on between the type of weapons and the type of tactics. A and C, that's pretty big. So yes, that was less than 0.05. And then B times C, the interaction of B and C, and again, that means there's no interaction, whether they went alone or in groups, or which kind of tactic they went. And the interaction for all three is, is not significant. So, in a nutshell, here's the results of the ANOVA source table, right? Main effect A, main effect B, main effect C, interaction, interaction, interaction. But now, let's interpret all of this. What this means is... Because of the interaction, the significant interaction between A and C, between weapon type and whether they went alone or not, because that is significant, we're not really going to look at the main effect of A. Okay, Because of the interaction between A and C, we don't look at the main effect of A, and we don't look at the main effect of C. Okay, Because we don't really know which one of those variables is causing the DV to change, to, to, you know, to behave the way it is. So we don't look at the main effect of A. But we do look at the interaction of A and C. So, but when it comes to the main effect of the main variables, the only one we're going to look at is B, because there was no significant reaction, I'm sorry, interaction between B and any of the other ones. So we can look at the, the main effect of B. And as we recall, B was the tactic okay so let's look at just the b's right the b's are the columns here's the lee alone column and here are the not alone columns so i'm just looking at the sum of the columns so b1 was the smash and grab 97 and look it goes down so smash and grab b1 and then down to the stealth right you see it dropped mightily and it dropped again when we went to the hide and seek and I went that's true for both of these levels of C right the smash and grab much higher stealth lower hide and seek lowest okay so so with B by far the 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 one with the most results is B1 which is the smash and grab So that tells us that speed is important. So you want to get in and out as fast as humanly possible. Bam. But now let's look at the rest of this stuff. So we know that for the level B, it's the smash and grab, which will produce the highest results. But now let's look at the interaction between A and C. We're going to pull up an old uh, matrix box that we made in one of the previous videos. But here's the interaction between A and C. So what what we're going to look at is... So C1 is alone, C2 is not alone, A1 is loud weapons, quiet weapons, A3 is handheld weapons. So the alone has a higher number than the not alone. And then going down this way between the A1, A2, A3, the, the handheld weapons are the highest by far. So here's all the variables with with their highest level. Okay, with weapon, it should be a handheld weapon. The tactic, it should be the smash and grab. And alone, yes. So it seems to me that the best way to ensure somebody coming back is to make sure they take a handheld weapon, they smash and grab as fast as they can, and they do it by themselves. So our advice to you, if you want to come back from your foraging, is grab a sword or a bat, fire up the Chevy, smash through a glass wall at your local 7-Eleven by yourself, and you have a much higher chance of coming back. But don't forget, once you get your stuff, you haul your bones back as soon as possible. And don't forget my cheese whiz, boy, or my Paul Malls. That's it. Hope you enjoyed it. MGZ out.
Merry Christmas to all. To all, a good night.